Well, here we are, Jonathan's Woods. Now, Jonathan's Woods is a hiking trail you can get here in Morris County, New Jersey, Rockaway, Booton. Um, there's a lot of history that goes along with it, Native American history, revolutionary history. There is a hog pen that is named because when the settlers felt like if the British were gonna invade or Indians would attack, they would up their villages and go all into the hog pen and hide. And it's a little nook that they took comfort in. And I was watching videos online and a historian actually said, if you were to dig in the hog pen area, you would probably find artifacts from these settlers and from these people that lived in the area from that time. So with that in mind, I contacted the ghost history medium and I said this would be a fun hike fun walk to do and see what she picks up along the way so let's see what happens today on the New Jersey paranormal project during emotional or traumatic events these impressions can be recorded and projected in the form of energy recorded onto the rocks and to the environment around us these events can range from all forms of human experiences. You can also find that spirits still are drawn to the area because it is where they found comfort, shelter, and also enjoyed the area in life. When you have events also being played out in the theater of war, you're bound to have some activity happening at the location. area and uh, let's see what we find so you picked up on a female moaning yeah, we were just walking here and I heard in my left ear uh, oh. like a little uh, female oh. which I don't usually huh. and it was in my left ear specifically yeah. oh. during the French and Indian War this location was used by the people in the area for a place of refuge from impending hostile threats. 20 miles west in Sussex County, there was a massacre along the shore of Schwartzwood Lake. The people of the area panicked, expecting the Native Americans that were loyal to the French at the time, if they invaded, would also invade this area. They used the hog pen to hide their families and livestock. It is believed if you were to do some digging at the hog pen, you might find some valuables buried beneath the ground. Things and head structures, but I'm getting like it's a community. Like it was almost like a, uh, like a, not a compound, but like a community establishment. Like they would come here and I'm seeing women, I'm seeing men, women carrying things things coming down. It's interesting because I I think the way we came in was how they came in. Okay. I don't think they came in from this way because I think this this is um this face is the east. Oh, I meant to bring my compass. I think this face is the east and if they were expecting um the British to come from the east they wouldn't have had tracks coming from this side. They would have had tracks coming from either the west or the north, I would guess. So I think they they came in on this back side. I'm getting carrying, carrying things on back, carrying, but women, men, um, and it was like like they had a community thing. I'm also getting something coming up from this area. That would be the side that we came in on, right? That back yeah. area there. It's like it's slithering. <laughs> slithering. So I'm not quite sure what that is. Sense anything like negative with that or? I, a little bit. Mm -hmm. it's, it's slithering. Maybe more of a Native American? It's more of like a land thing, like a... Like an elemental? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, is there anybody 
who, who comes here? Or they, they didn't have a battle here, or did they? As far as I know, there was no battle. Yeah. I'm not getting a, the sense that there was. This is just like a safe place, I yeah. guess, where they came to feel safe from Indian attack and British attack. And they would probably tie their livestock up and... Yeah, it feels like, like almost like a, like a community. Um, what are those, what's that word? Like the, what are those communities, those people? And a more uh, Puritan-like. So you know how sometimes I'll get them wearing like, um, like dark clothing? Or if I see like a uniform dark dress, okay. I'm seeing more of like white, like a, uh, white bonnets, white. Colonial. Yeah, like more colonial than I usually. <coughs> uh, like German or Dutch. Maybe German. But yeah, I got when he asked that question. I I heard David. Did he give you any other information? Uh, I think he's the same guy that said no, because when he said David, he was like, David. He feels very... Like in charge of the place? Yeah, like, ugh. <laughs> like, in, kind of in your face. Not like he's going to kick us out or do anything, but just like, twice there's the same voice, no, and David. <laughs> Usually they're a little nicer. <laughs> Usually. Not all the time. Sometimes they don't say anything. I don't know why he'd be upset. At the time of the American Revolution, many of the mountaintops in the area were used as beacons. These would act as a warning system to the people of the area if the British were invading. When we were at the hog pen, Kim picked up on the name David when we arrived. After doing some research, we found that there was a David who visited the site in the late 1800s. David Smith. He was interviewed for the history of Morris County in 1882. He was 84 years old at the time and would trek to the top of the mountain and visit Jonathan in his wigwam. Jonathan was a Native American who settled in the area and lived out his days in the woods that are appropriately named after him. David, would you, were you a part of creating this place? The temperatures, uh, not really dropping though. Holy mackerel. Okay. You made your presence? No. <laughs> Is this where you want us to, to go? You can touch this meter. We could communicate. If you're here, you can turn this to the color green, right there, or yellow. Point four. Oh, ours is going. Ours is going. Thank you for lighting it up. Did yours just light up too? Yes, it did. His just lit up too. So. Do we need to go lower to the ground? I'm feeling like I need to go lower. Oh, I just, I'm spiking. Yeah. I'm spiking. Yeah, I feel like we need to go lower. Thank you for showing us that you're here. I left the light is going down again. <clears throat> I wanted number one to find out who this David could be possibly and also look into the information on the history of this massacre that occurred at Schwartzwood Lake. One of the most audacious acts in the whole series of predatory aggressions in Sussex County, New Jersey by the Indians was the attack of a party of Indians into Hardwick in 1755, when they captured a young boy named Thomas Hunt and a slave belonging to Richard Hunt. 
And on their retreat by the way of the big pond, they surprised and made prisoners a man named Schwartzab and two of his children, a son and daughter, having first shot his wife, who stood in the door when they reached the house. At Schwartzab's house, after murdering his wife, they attempted to enter, but he seized his rifle and held them in check for a while, when he finally agreed to surrender if they would spare his life and the lives of his son and daughter, which the proposition of the Indians agreed to. But, usual in all such cases, they violated their privileges and tied him to a tree, tomahawked him, and left his body to the birds and beasts of prey. His two children were taken to an Indian town, Shawnee, now Plymouth, on the Susquehanna, on the opposite side of the river and five miles below the city of Wilkes-Barre, while Hunt and his slave were taken into Canada. Now the big pond today is named Schwartzwood, not Schwartzout. They changed it to the name Schwartzwood, and this event is what startled the settlers in that Denville Rockaway Booten area to seek protection of the hog pen and to use that as a way to hide if this Indian raid would ever happen. And in later years, use it for protection against the British forces. Going over some of the EVP recordings that we got from the hog pen trip, and I want you to carefully listen to this clip of Kim and I, and we're talking, and there's a raven that takes off from one of the trees. You'll hear us talking, and then all of a sudden you'll hear in the background, you'll hear something, shh, us. And it was nobody there. So I'm going to play it and listen. Get that? You hear the shh. You have a name? As we conclude this investigation of the hot pen, we are certain we will return. We believe that we received intelligent responses from our EMF meters and also the contact that Kim made with the spirit named David. We also received a shushing sound on our EVP recorders that none of us made. It's a place of beauty and importance to all that inhabit the area living and dead. All who hike this area should pay their respects to those who still cherish this land from the other side. The hog pen is a very active site that we plan on returning to in the future. Please check out the following sites and the YouTube video on the history of the hog pen. We will leave you with this quote from paranormal investigator Hans Holzer. And we will see you on the next New Jersey Paranormal 